For more information on our top stories and others, please visit our website, channelstv.com. YouTube.com slash channelsweb has videos of our shows. I'm going to hand it over now to Ibrahim Adra in Abuja for more on the News at 10. Hi, Ibrahim. Great to see you. Hi, Marachi. Good to see you as well. Nigeria's High Commission in Accra, Ghana, has not been evicted, and that's according to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. A communique from the spokesperson of the ministry says the clarification follows reports suggesting that the commission in Accra had been violated by the host country. The statement explains that the lease hold on the property under reference used by the Federal Minister of Finance since 1957 and later bequeathed to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has expired. While the High Commission is already exploring the possibilities of renewing the lease agreement with the host authorities. The community also clarified the insinuation that the property was housing either the residence of the High Commissioner or the Chancery or staff quarters. The minister also stated specifically that there has been no diplomatic row between Nigeria and the Ghanaian authorities. And in Anambra State in the southeast, Governor Willie Obiano has officially kicked off the Oka Millennium City Housing Project, a 3 amps zone area of the state capital. The project has been executed under the public-private partnership to be completed in 30 months at the cost of about 13 billion naira. Governor Obiano says a smart new city with state-of-the-art infrastructure will help close the housing deficit in the state. It's the official flag off of construction activities at the Oka Millennium City. The ceremony is one of the major events in Governor Willie Obiano's administration and he's excited to kick it off. <laughs> Top government officials, members of the State House of Assembly, traditional rulers and others gather to witness the groundbreaking ceremony. This project will undoubtedly boost the state infrastructural stock propel this diversification effort and enhance immensely its capacity to attract and retain investment. The Managing Director of the Anambra State Investment Promotion and Protection Agency and the State Commissioner for Housing say the project will not only solve housing problems in the state, but will also provide jobs. The Oka Millennium City Project is a project to develop 100 hectares of land here at Oka. It is a new city for us to be developed in phases, kicking off with the first phase of 25 hectares. He has a workshop that will actually train and employ you in the area. Because you're saying that we're not just providing houses, we also have to uh, develop people. According to the governor, the new smart city is being established right in the heart of the state. Uh, this city is a smart city. It's going to be different from the uh, other projects you see anywhere. Even the seven, the seven other ones we have signed in Anambra State. This city is going to be very different. The high point of the event is the symbolic groundbreaking and the unveiling of the plaque of inauguration at the new site. The Orca Millennium City project is one out of over seven housing projects aimed at addressing the housing deficit in Anambra State. Two thousand nineteen was Nigeria's major election year, and the president and his party, the APC, got re-elected for a second term in office. There were major losses and significant wins and also notable lessons for a new decade and the year 2020. In this report, our political correspondent, Shiwa Kimbalui, has a review of politics in the year 2019. No doubt, 2019 was politically eventful. Of course, it was an election year and things were rather intense. For a better appreciation of the dynamics of the year 2019 and its politics, I will categorize the event into four broad areas. Elections, post-elections, state politics, and governance-related matters. Everything! 
The intensity of the 2019 elections campaign gripped the nation. Nigeria grew into 19 political parties. At the end of the day, Muhammad Buhari of the APC was re-elected for a second term in office. His election mandate was challenged up to the Supreme Court. We must look at the integrity of the voters register. There are still questions, and I think that looking at the elections, we must, as a threshold, determine whether the voters register is, it has sufficient integrity to ensure that people would say that this is what would guide an election. There were losses and there were major winners. From our your state governor, from our Kwai Bottom State governor, from our Senate president, all lost their elections to the Senate. But the APC lost four states of Bauchi, Oyo, Adamara, and Imo states to the PDP. While PDP, on the other hand, lost Gombe and Kwara state to the APC. Internal party crisis in Rivers and Zamfara state hurt the APC. We want a situation where every vote will count and where every voter, every registered voter, will cast their votes, I mean, vote, without any fear of intimidation or harassment. In the post election, APC suspended some former governors and a sitting governor over anti party activities and they have since been reinstated. President Muhammad Obuari did not wait for too long this time around, as he did in the first term before he appointed his ministers. The cabinet comprised of majorly old hands, which he used in the first term. The office of the vice president was hit by massive staff layoffs. Interesting scenarios played out in several states of the Federation, with Edo State getting the most of the fever, as the governor, Godwin Obaseki, and his predecessor and APC national chairman, Adams Obshomale, engaged in a fierce political dispute. The issue of the rule of law was predominant as there was an outcry over some Nigerians undergoing prosecution. Omo Yelesha Ure and Sambo Dasuki were later released. For the first time in a long time, the budget was passed into law to regularize the budget cycle of January to December. The year ended with a lot of expectations and unresolved political squabbles. The president preached hope in his New Year message, typical of the year after an election year. Citizens will be demanding of government and politicians will be reminded of their campaign promises. Shunwa Kimbalue, reporting for Channels Television News. We continue our review of politics in the year 2019. And I'll be joined on the News at 10 now by Professor Isaac Obasi from the Department of Political Science at the University of Lagos to examine some of the major political events of the year just gone by. Professor Obasi, thank you for joining us on the News at 10. A happy new year to you. Thank you, Amarachi. I'm not from University of Lagos, from University of Abuja. Department of Public Administration. I keep on stressing this any time I come here, but I read post signs. Our sincere apologies. Uh, but let's look at uh, 2019, which is an Thank election you. year. If you compare that with 2015, which is also an election year, how would you rate the nation's electoral development? Uh, let me make this analogy. If you read medicine in the medical school and come out to practice, and you are busy killing people through poor knowledge of how to do career surgery, how to prescribe drugs and the rest of that, would that be a good profession? I don't think, whether it's 2015 and 2019 elections, that we have really triumphed in a way that we should be clapping for ourselves. But if you want a comparison of 2015 and 19, they are quite post apart. We had mileage, political mileage, in 2015. We set a record that wasn't there before. Uh, a sitting president willingly agreed to leave office and, I mean, didn't cause any chaos in the system. That's commendable, and Africa, were, you know, had uh, commended us and the world indeed. But 2019, we can't, say, we can't say exactly the same thing. So we are retrogressing, that's the way I say it, unless we really retrace our steps 
to find the right path to move on our politics. 2019 is a sad year for Nigeria in, political, in the political scene. And yet we had 91 political parties. Uh, that should have provided a level playing field for everyone who had an interest in participating in politics in 2019. Would you say they had that opportunity? No, that itself is part of the chaos. We don't need that. We need at most three political parties in this country. Um, there is a grand plot and a fraud surrounding the registration of political parties. And um, you see it, it's something orchestrated. You see after elections, the dancing around of politicians who now make you realize that indeed they were planted in all those other parties to be able to spoil the fate of others. I mean, that itself is a problem. I next should take a decisive decision about a number of political parties. We should not be involved in chaos, wasting our monies, printing papers that should be used to set up hospitals and the rest of them. We have no business creating political parties more than three in this country. And yet we saw, you know, uh, politics being, internal party politics being a big deal in 2019. An example was Samfara and River State with the case of the APC. Uh, quite a big lesson there it was for everyone. Um, let's talk about the manner of the political party administration uh, of its internal affairs. Would you give them a pass, Mark, or do you think they have succeeded in further confusing our political system? <laughs> I like your conclusion. But let, let me say that uh, in that particular aspect, I, I have to you know, commend INEC for being bold enough to uh, deal decisively on what happened in both in Zamfara and uh, um, River State. And I, I think and I hope they should do that elsewhere. Uh, but the political parties themselves have not learned a lot, a lot of lessons. Internal democracy is still a big game, a, a, a realist game, where power and money and all that, in, including intimidation, you know, uh, holding sway. And I don't think that is the way to go. Like the analogy I gave you at the beginning, if you have your child who, who genuinely wants to serve and repo signs, for instance, to come and, so is it what we are doing he will do? No, nobody will want that. I mean, that's the theater of war that we are creating the political scene of this country. And that reminds me of what the promise the president made, even though I said last time here that it was coming too late. But if he's able to do, uh, achieve that and sanitize the electoral system, that would be, history would remind, remember him kindly. Yeah, and maybe, maybe his promise at the beginning of the year about him not uh, participating anymore in elections may have uh, may, may be setting us on the right path. But 2020, do you see a greater deal of responsibility of the political class, the plight of citizens, which have been uh, played out in 2019? I didn't get that question very well. Please, a little bit of expansion. I'm asking if this year, which is the start of a new decade, you do see greater responsibility of the yeah. political class in uh, yeah. um, um, uh, ameliorating some of the sufferings, you know, that Nigerians have gone through in 2019. People had a lot to complain about in the previous year. Yes, I, we can only be optimistic. But given by the way they are going, I don't know whether we can um, hope that. Let's take, for instance, first... The president declared it a decade of prosperity. How do we get that? If we can use 37 billion naira to be renovating a house, that if you get a complex, that if you get a new person who comes from a village, you think this place is a heaven. And you, here you are, and people are resisting that, that that amount is not much. And somebody is telling us it will collapse on their head. Can we see that building collapse one day and see what will happen? It will not collapse. It's a solidly built uh, um, structure. So we should not spend that money. That's the first thing. If this is a decade of uh, prosperity, let's start in redirecting that money to building schools, hospitals, and repairing our roads. Professor Isaac Obase of the University of Abuja, thank you for joining us on the News at 10 tonight. Thank you, Amraj.